Hello, good evening. Hello, Paula. How are you? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. All good. All good. So today is uh, July 9th and uh, it's almost eight in the evening in Germany where I am at. And I am Laura Maria Calderone and this is 14 Days to Change. And with us we have Paula Tiranti. She is an Italian student living in the UK studying physics and also physics. And yeah, hi Paula. Hi again. again. So you are our 16th story in the series, but um, it's actually the second time we speak. It's our second interview because the first one was 14 days ago, exactly. So we had our first interview on the 25th of June. Before we really talk about what has happened in these two weeks in your life, um, but also in Italy because you're Italian and in the UK where you study and live, I'd like to share bits and pieces of the conversation that we had two weeks ago and uh, just show you the video of it. And at the same time, I'd like you to think about the numbers. So what the figures were back then and now, for instance, in Italy, when we spoke on the 25th of June, we had 239,706 cases and we had um, 34,678 deaths. Today, 9th of June, Italy has 242,363 and that's, there are now 34,926. So that means there's, there's been a few more deaths, uh, unfortunately, and we have had uh, some new cases, right? In the UK, things are a little bit more complicated because a few days ago, they, uh, there were around 30,000 cases that were taken out from the total uh, amount of cases because it, they were duplicates, counted twice. So um, although when we spoke, the number was approaching 300,000 or just surpassed 300,000, now obviously it's different. So I'm just gonna speak about the numbers right now, which is, 286,979, uh, pardon, and 44,517 deaths. But as you know, uh, there are cases, there are deaths. For instance, yesterday, you, the UK had 640 new cases and 126 new deaths. Uh, yeah. Of course, let's keep in mind, it's all the, unfortunately, it's been mostly England that has been suffering the numbers. And um, I think that's enough about numbers, but now we know them. So let's just keep them in mind while we watch yeah. you and me two weeks ago. Yeah. So I'm going to share the video. So please go on mute and let me know that you can hear and watch. Okay. So, where are you? Here you are, Paula. Now you should be able to see yourself. I'm making it big. Let's start. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Hi, so I'm a 21-year-old student. I'm originally from Italy, but I came here three years ago in the UK, in the northeast of England. Uh, to study at university. I'm a physics with astrophysics student oh. and yeah I've been I've been here for quite a while uh, so yeah this is me. This is you and uh, do you like I'm, I'm assuming you you're liking it because how? Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying my time here in the UK. It's, it's quite different from from Italy although we're we're always let's say in Europe, but uh, I can still see there are quite differences, uh, especially in the weather. But uh, finally, summer is <laughs> come here. Uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying my time here and I'm building my life here, and I have friends and. Uh, yeah, I've settled down here. Settled down. Oh, that's good. And uh, where in Italy are you from? Uh, north so, or south? Yeah, I'm from the northeast as well. Uh, I'm from Veneto, uh, from Padova, so that's near Venice. 
perfect. Yeah, so quite different from where you are right now. But yeah. uh, like you said, you're settling down. So it's, it's really nice. Tell yeah. us, what is it that is happening right now, both in the UK and Italy? What is the topic uh, that people are talking about? What's on the news? What are the concerns? So what, what is really happening in the UK and Italy? Just give us a look. So at the moment, uh, in the UK, actually, two days ago now, uh, the Prime Minister gave new instructions for lockdown easing rules. Uh, so now he announced that on the 4th of July, uh, main activities, non-essential activities will open again. So such as uh, pubs, such as cinemas, such as hairdressers, and, and so on. On. So all them activities. Um, also shops, non-essential shops opened again on the 15th, so that's 10 days ago. Um, so I'd say this is the main rule and another rule he um, allowed to ease is um, first of all the two meter rule got changed from two meters to one meter, uh, where it's not possible to keep the two meters distance uh, between people. Okay. And um, he also allowed uh, people from two different households to meet indoors. As before, uh, you could only meet outdoors, um, up to a group of six people from six different households, but obviously keeping distance. Uh, so this is the main um, news that's getting discussed right now uh, here in the UK. As per Italy, uh, these changes happened uh, a while ago, I'd say now, um, a month ago actually. Um, so everyone's pretty much back at normal life. Well, we shall say the new normal. Um, the latest news is especially for my region because now in Italy everything works more within rather than the whole country. So within my region, the, um, as, as there was um, the compulsory rule to wear the mask outside as well, now the rule is to wear it compulsory only inside and it's not compulsory anymore to wear outside. Uh, the, they still suggest to keep one meter distance, although that's very argumentable that whether people keep it or not. Um, and also you can travel within regions. So that was a thing that before it wasn't allowed. Um, so I'd say these are the main things that are going on in the country. Okay, and uh, just to stay for a little bit with Italy, now that it has been a couple of weeks that people can go from one region to another, how does it work? Do they have to inform someone that they're going to another region or uh, do they have to write it somewhere, say something, or they just go and come back as they please without saying yeah. anything? So the rule that you, as I know, yeah. uh, the rule that you have to write where were you going, why, and so on, was uh, active, let's say, uh, till like a month and a half ago. Now you can travel just for leisure, you know, go to the seaside or whatever, uh, without having to write any um, like self-certification. Um, but yeah, it's important to say that before in Italy, it was compulsory to write it every time you were going out. Yes, uh, whilst here in the, in the UK, uh, the fa no one can travel technically unless you're returning to your original household, say to meet with the family and stuff. No one can travel to go um, to another household um, and most importantly you do not have to uh, and you were never required to um, write any certification down so uh, ever not even at the beginning of lockdown they they just uh, rely on the on the self person to be honest so when it was prohibited to go say to the seaside they were 
literally just relying on on people um even during the strictest rules here in the uk okay so more i trust you go for it this is what you should do yeah okay. and um the well, we can talk about that afterwards okay i think that's uh the, what about shopping? You mentioned that in the UK, the stores have been open. Have you gone shopping yet or no? No, I haven't. To be fair, I was out uh, walking by the near the city center the first day they opened uh, shops. And when I saw the main, uh, the main road being so crowded as if it was like Christmas shopping time, mm -hmm. I, I, I just, I didn't want to put myself through that. Uh, I cannot even imagine how many hours you would have to wait because there still are queues outside and you know social distancing and everything. So no, I have not been shopping. Um, I just go to essential shops and that's about it. Okay. So you would you say you're more careful about not going shopping because of the quantity of people and the waiting or because of the quantity of people and a little bit of feeling uncomfortable because of the virus or is it a combination yeah um, i would say a combination for sure um having not been in that situation i wouldn't be too sure i would be i could be in the middle of such a crowd and be calm uh, for sure it's, it's gonna feel weird to be in such a crowd after three months of everyone being in, in their own households um so yes for sure there would be some discomfort uh, but mainly it's because I I don't think it's wise now to uh, first of all like God have such gatherings uh, and also uh, unless it's essential because that would be literally just oh I want to go shopping you know unless I really need a pair of jeans uh, I don't really need it so I can avoid it uh, yeah that's I think the same as you. It's it's a good way of thinking. There's some things we do need, um, but some others that it's not worth it. At least not yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, what are your hopes? What are your concerns? What is it that you think is going to happen in the next few days, in the next few weeks, both in Italy and the UK, since we've been speaking about both countries? Yeah. And what is it that of course you don't want or you want to happen just what are you thinking so let's start with the things i don't want so there are uh, funnily saying let's say my grandma has a great humor and and she was like well you know it's a shame we can't see each other now because i survived this pandemic but you know i don't know if i'll be here to for Christmas when we'll see again, because they say there's a second wave of the virus in October. And so let's see if I survive this one. Okay, she, she has a great humor and that's amazing. <laughs> but, you know, I, I for sure, I hope there won't be a second wave of all of this in October. Uh, I hope there won't be here in the UK because I'm, I'm reading several articles of scientists saying, you know, the way lockdown is being eased in the UK is very risky, as, as, we, as we said earlier. And so they're, they're saying probably there will be a second wave. And, you know, it's upon, again, it's upon the individual to like take, take responsibility for the actions. And yes, they're opening this, this and that, but that doesn't mean that you can go around and, you know, start hugging everyone as, as before. Unfortunately, not yet. So for sure, I'm, I'm hoping a second wave won't come, whether it's in two weeks, whether it's in four months. I really hope that, you know, research and all of that will help this to stop. So for sure, I'm hoping that. Um, 
I'm hoping that I'm hoping I really am hoping that people here in the UK will um, will be responsible from the 4th of July on when they open everything because again I've seen so many pictures and videos and uh, sent by friends and you know going around with social media um, of when they opened uh, you know activities in Italy and bars and everything and all, all partying it, like nothing had happened like a, like a pandemic wasn't out there and so I'm hoping that at least in the UK it's better I can't see it being better uh, because people are always people and as soon as you give them freedom you know they, they think whatever but I'm, I'm still hoping that here on the 4th of July onwards they'll be responsible hopefully um, and so for the UK I hope that for for Italy I'll be traveling back next week um, next Wednesday so first of all I'm hoping the flight is safe <laughs> and I can't deny I'm nervous because I'm yeah, I'm traveling for the first time after seven months that's gonna feel weird as obviously I'm used to travel a lot uh, UK Italy but also abroad and it's been so long since I've been on a plane um, it's gonna be weird but i hope that i can see people taking the right measurements and safety measurements and social distancing because as for now when i'm walking in the city sometimes they walk past you as i said before as if you, they didn't know a pandemic is out there you know yeah. do you not read the news and even if you don't read the news you should know <laughs> uh, so I hope that when I travel, I notice that people are really taking care of this because it's important. And yeah, I think these are the hopes. I think uh, within two weeks or maybe within the next month, things won't move as fast as the past three months because at the past three months, things were changing basically every day, you know. One day they say a thing and the other day they say another thing. And so things were changing and moving uh, exponentially and figures and numbers and rules and constrictions and stuff. Uh, I think in the, in, the, uh, in the next few weeks, things will change slowly. And I think this will be the new reality. I think we won't be able to live a normal life as in February, January, as soon as we think. I think they'll ease things, but very slowly. People think lockdown is ended, back to normal. But the thing is, we'll first live a different normal. And that's the thing, uh, it, it, it'll be for sure weird. Also, it'll be very weird to go in a country where lockdown is not in action anymore and um, going from I can have a walk with friends in the park here in the UK to you can go to the hairdresser in Italy. <laughs> so it, it'll be uh, for sure an impact. It'll be interesting. And I mean, your, your hopes are basically very clear and so we take the opposite of your hopes and we understand your concerns yeah so to finish paula now that you have explained your hopes you have made us understand your concerns and you have told us what you think i wanted you to now tell me if you could give a message to Paula, if you could give a message to the Paula that is going to be here in 14 days, the Paula that is in the future, what message would you give her? <laughs> I think, I think first of all, of course, hug your family <laughs> of course still it's nice to be back to your home country but 
still keeping that one meter distance and still following those rules still will make the difference still will help numbers change and this going away because in the end that's what we all want uh, so to the power of the future I say yes it's nice to be back and yes you can go to the beach now and get a tan <laughs> but use even by just using that mask in the in the shop and wearing those gloves and keeping that meter distance uh, is important this so, would be it <laughs> this would be your message so enjoy your time with your family hug them <laughs> but still be careful be cautious yeah it's a good message it's a good message and with these words uh, i thank you very much paula it has been an, a pleasure absolute pleasure talking to you thank you once again for taking the time and giving us your your experience your perspective on both countries two very different countries that responded very differently to the coronavirus pandemic and um yeah i i leave you have a wonderful evening and thank you I for will, having me thank you and i will speak to you in 14 days thank you for sure looking forward to that same here ciao paula and talk to you in 14 days ciao paula from the future which is the present <laughs> yeah yeah so this is the first time you watched the video um, yeah <laughs> you. The first time you see not only some of the things you said but um especially your concerns right your hopes and the message to yourself and we have a lot to talk first thing <laughs> did you hug your family yeah for sure yeah they were well it was very emotional of course and um in the end we were very happy to be reunited for sure yeah then i mean there's no order really uh but just tell me first tell me your reactions from seeing these bits and pieces from two weeks ago um it's a bit bittersweet to see that under many aspects i was right uh, even for the bad things uh, such as the um, process of easing lockdown in the UK uh, because it did go exactly as I was hoping not to and it did go just like it happened uh, in Italy. Uh, so just as I said the other time, people will always be people, so that for sure. Um, on a positive note, um, I'm happy that uh, I respected my own message to myself. Uh, so um, I did see people, um, I did keep my distance and I did take all the safety measures. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy also to see that other people do respect these uh, safety guidelines so yeah i'm happy under that point of view of course it's bittersweet for how people still were perhaps a bit irresponsible in the uk um but i cannot deny that like things like that you see them everywhere um so that's for sure so before we continue just oh it's gone did you go on mute no no oh. i'm here there's there's a noise when you speak i don't know sounds like um no. see now there isn't talk okay yeah so weird Is or there move your skill now uh, i can hear you and everything it's just uh i don't know i don't even know how to explain the noise it's the noise that you would hear back in the day when you were connecting the internet i think i don't know uh, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, try it. Can you move your computer a little bit to the right or to the left? And I'll talk. Uh, hello. Still there. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, so that was a little, <laughs> a little pause there talking about something else. What about um, your trip? Can you tell me, because when we left off last time, you were nervous, right? Uh, that you were going to take the flight and everything, but you were going to be prepared and so on. And I'd like to know how, tell us everything. How did it go? How did it feel? What were the measures, both in the UK and Italy? Just tell us. Yeah. So for sure, there were safety measures in both airports. So because I, uh, so I departed from Edinburgh. So I, I do not know the department um, section of the Venice airport. But anyway, uh, there were safety measures. Um, neither in the UK nor in Italy, they tested my temperature. So um or did any health check they obviously they checked the documents and that 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 was it um social distancing was taking place so on the plane itself uh each person sat on one row and that was it so it was one person per row so three seats however i did notice uh Yes, we all kept our masks on, whether it was in the airport or on the airplane. Well, as soon as the plane landed, people do just as normally they do. As soon as the plane lands, they all get up and want to leave the airplane. But the thing is that obviously the spaces are very contained, you know, and so when everyone stands up to go next to the door, they, they weren't keeping that meter distance. And even if they, they said, uh, we remind you to keep your mask on and keep your distance, it's not that people went back to their seats. So yes, there were safety measures, but what, what's the point in sitting one person per row if after you all stand up all together? So yes, I kept my distance and I, I sat until we were able to leave the plane, but I didn't really see the point in all of that. But that's the only note I would say was a bit irresponsible maybe. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I had read a while ago that one of the things that they were gonna do is uh, some airlines were gonna do was to not have any refreshments so no serving of food and drinks uh in order to prevent you know the the stewardess going around the flight yeah yeah they they didn't i was a bit asleep but uh they didn't they just passed to collect rubbish and that was that was it i believe yeah okay and were you nervous were you how did you feel uh i was nervous yes for sure because it's not that you get to travel every day during a pandemic um on an airplane um but to be fair the airline i traveled with um even the week before or maybe just a few days before sent me all the regulations and I did know what to do and what they were doing to keep the place sanitized like we sanitize our planes every 24 hours we're gonna do this this and this uh, if the customer please can do this this and this that would be great um, so I that for sure helped me and i don't know seeing people around me more calm helped me for sure because it reminded me that yes we're all wearing masks and we're all having you know social distancing and everything but in the end it's a flight and we've all done this many times before so you know we're used to it and what about gloves and the face shield or was it only masks 
fully masks. Mm -hmm. um, probably um, staff on board had gloves, but I cannot really remember. No one had shields that I can remember. Um, security, security staff, uh, once passing the security, they did have it, uh, that was about it. The rest, the boarding staff, uh, they just had masks. The only thing is you, you weren't supposed to hand your passport nor your ticket, but it was upon you, they were there to check, uh, to scan it, whilst landing in Venice, um, the, 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 usually you scan your passport and it's all automatic and there aren't any more police officers um, that uh, check themselves. But it was the contrary, they closed the, the machines for which you would have scanned your passport. So you actually had to hand uh, your passport to the officers. So I I, I just noticed this difference where in Edinburgh they avoided contact uh, handing passports while in, in Venice that was the only option. Well, it's also the fact that you avoid touching machines, any type of machine from like the bankomat the, where you take out the, the cash dispenser, right? Or any other thing, it's just the fact of not touching the machine and but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the best way is you scan without touching anything, right? You touch your own passport, you, if there's no button, scan or just show. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, what about when you, so you arrived, you left the plane in Venice, you got off the plane, and then do you have to inform or is there something that you have to sign that you have to write, the fever check, uh, test check, nothing? No, no one asked me anything. Uh, so I landed on the 1st of July. And as I, as I mentioned two weeks ago, now rules are upon region governors. So it depends upon the region where you land and the rules that are in action in that region. So within Veneto, uh, you, on the 1st of July, you weren't supposed to do anything. No one asked you anything. Now the rules changed a little bit for people that travel and then go back to work and uh, so the, um, your employer needs to test you um, uh, whether you're positive or not and if you're positive obviously then you should quarantine yourself uh, but still even with this rule um, people that don't work that could be myself don't need to do anything anyway uh, so yeah it, it we shall say you're actually free to travel let's say okay and how is life now there in Padova you're in Padova right yeah I'm in Padova because so, um, last time when we spoke and also what we know from the news and just facts of the history of this pandemic is that it was the north of Italy that was the first hit and the worst hit and it was around Padova it was that that area that was the worst right so tell me yeah tell me it was um right uh the last weekend I actually uh, met um we were talking with a person from exactly that same town where everything, let's say, started. And she was telling us how it was literally locked down, like there was military all around the perimeter of the town and there were helicopters flying over the town. And so I didn't know this. And of course, news don't report to that detail so that was kind of shocking because we i didn't have i didn't have to leave this uh, in the uk um so as per now i feel quite safe to go around within all safety measures again and of course i feel better if uh, i'm meeting someone or hanging out just myself uh, out outdoors 
I haven't gone into super crowded places now because I don't think it's smart still. Um, but the fact that here it's compulsory to wear masks, the fact that there are hand sanitizers at every spot and people actually use them, um, for sure um, calms me down and um, makes me feel safe despite being where everything started here in Italy. So, yes. And what about, I mean, you mentioned that you don't want to go anywhere that is crowded. So I assume that you haven't gone shopping either. No, I haven't. Um, uh, no, sh well, grocery shopping, okay, the essential. But clothes shopping, not yet, no. Um, I am planning to go uh, just as actually I did go in the in the UK after that. Uh, the thing is, I go as soon as the shops open at 9 a.m. And I specifically know what I need. Mm -hmm. uh, and I go there, I get it, and that's about it. Um, so in the UK, it, I think it took me like... 10 minutes maybe 15 because there was a long queue to pay but so uh i do make sure i don't go like at at 12 p.m and stuff we um also me you know a few days ago was the first time since february since middle early middle of february that i went into a store so not a supermarket but an actual store and uh I went in because I was I went for a walk with my husband to to buy a mozzarella. Actually, we have this place nearby that they have Italian products, and we really wanted to eat mozzarella. So we we as we walked there, there was a store, and I and I I felt like oh, there's that looks nice. I want to see, and obviously we had the masks because here in Germany, uh, you cannot go into a store or a supermarket without a mask. You have to wear a mask when you go indoors. And uh, so I had the mask with me and I said, okay, there's nobody, let me go in. And a few minutes after somebody went in, and so it was me, somebody else, and the, the owner or the person that works there. And I didn't enjoy it. I felt uncomfortable. I just kept on thinking, okay, it's not only the people, it's what they touch. And I don't know, I immediately left and I, and I said, I told my husband, I'm like, no, like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> um, for sure, it's something we need to get used to again. Um, I felt weird the first time in a supermarket in Italy, just because things do work a little bit differently. Because, for example, in the UK, in every supermarket, you, you have to follow that path there are arrows just so people don't go back and then you know you meet other people coming in the opposite dire direction and uh, here in Italy there there weren't arrows uh, which is fine because in the end in empty shops also in the UK they tell you it's fine if you don't follow them if there are like five people in the store so that was a bit weird and and I yeah, I was there. I, I probably looked like a psychopath. I don't know. I was trying to avoid everyone because maybe, you know, they go there and they're just like, oh, I, I just need to get this product just in front of you. And they just come in front, like over you. Um, so perhaps because, of course, in the UK, lockdown was still quite in action people wouldn't do something like that and because i wasn't used to it it felt weird um and ever since i haven't gone to the supermarket <laughs> but um i think sooner or later we'll we'll have to go shopping we'll have to go out there because this is just gonna be the new way we're living life for a little bit um and if we keep, you know, saying, well, I, I don't want to go out, I don't want to go out, then I, like sometimes I do tell myself you actually have to because then you, you make it such a big thing in your head 
that then it's even worse. So I do try and follow, whether it's the English, British uh, government or the Italian government, I do try and follow the government's guideline because I do think they do not put rules randomly. So if you are allowed to go outdoors and get your takeaway coffee, yes, don't do it when there are 50 people there, but I, if there is no arm, we also shouldn't make it a big thing in our head. So like also know the balance, right? Uh, yeah. If they're saying, yes, you can go out to a store, buy your coffee and take it away, then try to do that when you're comfortable, obviously, but um, not when there's 50 people. So still yeah. be cautious, still be careful, yeah. but try to come out of your... Because let's face it, this pandemic wasn't only a health problem, but because of such long lockdowns, it also became a mental health problem. And so then a lot of countries find themselves now facing that. And so now you have even more problems. So, of course, it's not wise uh, to do the opposite and go out as if there wasn't an actual health problem. But then we shouldn't arm ourselves and create other problems. So there's there's already enough like you said there's so yeah. many the mental health and the health and the economy and well also poverty and hunger like it's yeah. everything is being affected right so yes be cautious wear a mask whenever uh you're around people especially if you're indoors wear it properly so not not here but cover your mouth and your nose and just do it hygienically and social distance, right? It, you can't just wear a mask. You need to social distance. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, just keep on doing these things. But also try to, if it feels safe, if it looks safe, then it might be safe, right? You need, we, all of us need to know the risk of transmission, right? So what the, what the, are not. So what's the reproduction number? where we live, right? And then based on that, figure out our risk, right? If it, maybe if Paula and I go for a walk in the park and then sit a meter and a half away and have a glass of wine, that's, that's a little bit risky, but it's okay compared to if yeah. Paula and I go and have a party in a house in a basement with no windows and nobody wearing masks, right? Yeah, so. exactly. For sure, that for sure. Depends. And your friends and everyone, all okay? In yes, yes. I'm I'm very glad that at least people around me. Then I can see people not, but uh, people around me are sensible and they do understand that this is a problem and this is a pandemic and you cannot live uh, your normal life. Uh, so. I'm surrounded by these kind of people, so I feel even more safe, for sure. Uh, it's not that anyone tried to force me to uh, not follow rules, or um, so I also feel safe under under that point of view, for sure. Paula, I think uh, we've been talking a lot again, <laughs> so um, let's. Let's finish it here because we did speak about some of the stuff that we wanted to talk about, how things have changed and not changed. Also your, your trip, right? You're traveling. It's not everybody that should be traveling and it's not everybody that can travel, right? Uh, in a pandemic. So it was interesting also to see the difference from, go, from leaving a country to getting into a country, always in Europe, but still. But now um, as a last question, I wanted to taking a little bit of an inspiration from the last question we had in the first interview. Back then I had asked you to give yourself a message, right? To speak to the Paula of the future and tell her something, tell her a message. Now instead, based on this experience that you've had with me with 14 days to change and 
how we've seen how things can change in two weeks, right? Both countries where you live and study and where you're from, they have increased the numbers. So, and some places like in the UK, there's uh, cities that went into lockdown because of an increase, right? Uh, in, for instance, in Italy, certain flights from certain countries like um, Bangladesh even, they're, they're going to be denied for a while because there's a, a spike in cases in Rome, right? So the stories are different, but the reasons are the same, no? In the end. And this shows us that we're all in the same boat, um, even though your experience is different, was different. And we spoke about it also. So now what I want you to tell me, tell us, is if you could give a message to whoever is going to watch this video. And doesn't matter if they come from a place that is better off than Italy or the UK or another or a city or country that's doing worse than the UK and Italy. If you could tell them something, what would you tell them? I tell them that a virus doesn't disappear overnight to for sure follow the government guideline, but also to follow your citizen instinct. Um, which hopefully is sensible and i'd i'd say it's not impossible to get over this because it it already happened throughout history but because of the nature of this virus it is essential that each and every one of us make their own part so this would be the message perfect message because um, that's what the series is about, right? 14 days to change means you can really make a difference. All of our actions have a consequence, make a difference. And it's up to us if we wanted to do good or bad. And so think about you, think about me, think about the community, right? The, yeah. everything. So perfect message. And, uh, Thank you very much, Paula. It has been a pleasure having you here. And it's been really, really, really nice talking to you. Thank you. It was nice talking to you as well. And I hope all the best for the UK and obviously for Italy, um, the North and the South and every, everything in between. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you very much. 14 days to change with us, Paula. Ciao, Paula. Ciao.